Hi everyone, this is Konzel here. So today, I have Math Guide 1.1, Yae Math Guide, Yae Miku, because we there there has just been a round of changes in the 2.5 beta. So there are some base stats change, signature weapon effect change, constellation name change. So we'll talk about all this. I'll address the buffs, aspiry as well as the e-not snapshotting in this video too. Uh, some updated rotations the updated damage comparison as well and we have an alternate rotation here for the electro hyper carry where we have a Q focus and an E focus E focus being the alternate and we have a TRDR and obviously we'll talk about what's next right let's get right into it so basically the base stats changed at level 90 what we have here is the HP is dropped by almost 1000 it's about 900 Attack is increased from 264 to 340, which is really good. Defense dropped from 682 to 569. That's quite a big drop. So base, this base attack buff is really good. It brings the attack from slightly above a 4-star character. A typical 4-star DPS character is something like 240 plus attack. Okay, so 264 was only slightly above. Now, with it being increased to 340, it's actually at the top range of 5-star DPS characters. Typically 530 to 5, sorry, 330, 330 to 350, that's the range of the uh, top stats for DPS characters, 5 star. Okay, so I will share the updated figures in this video too, based on this uh, increase in base attack. And just want to point out that this also makes building EM on her worse, especially if you go more EM than attack, because you are losing out more attack here. Because of the base attack and the attack percentage. Uh, let's talk about the nerf. I know that most people don't care about the HP nerf as well as defense nerf. But this nerf basically accentuates her role as a sub DPS. Because with her defense being so low, even lower than 4 star characters, some 4 star characters that are not defense skilling, it means that she really takes a lot of damage. She gets one shot really easily, and shields on her don't last as long. Because shield, the damage taken by your shield is affected by the on field characters DP, uh, the defense. So in this case, her defense being so low, it does punish you if you use her as a main DPS. Not to mention in the first place, her kit doesn't really encourage her as a main DPS to begin with. So I'll say using her as a main DPS is even more punishing right now because of the very very low defense. HP is still okay. HP is higher than even some 4 star characters with HP skilling. That's okay. The problem is the defense. The defense is really, really low. I know most people don't care about defense, but it makes a difference, trust me. Especially when you get hit by those heavy uh, one-shot attacks. Okay, now let's talk about the weapon effect change. Essentially, what happens is that the buff on the weapon has been increased from 12 seconds to 16 seconds. This pretty much ensures that you always have your buff without prematurely resetting your sakuras or turrets. Because the highest Sakura duration is 14 seconds. So this being 16 seconds is very good for her. In fact, my previous math, my math guide 1 did not factor in the uh, expiry of this as well. And I'll talk about it in section 2. So the next change is just a constellation name change. Doesn't really affect the constellation itself. It's really more to match. Match the description of the constellation so yeah just FYI doesn't really affect her performance per se okay now let's talk about buff aspiry and E not snapshotting so my math guide 1 was focused on Yae's E no snapshotting interaction with a signature weapons buff and I missed the fact that her off field damage will not snapshot bandits Q or C2 Kazuha effect and because of all the burst rotations, they will not get most of the other buffs as well. Such as the buff from Freedom Swarm, which lasts for 12 seconds. 4-piece Noblis, which lasts for 10 seconds. Uh, if you have another Catalyst user giving you Trillion Tears of Dragon Slayer, that's also 10 seconds. So by the time you do finish all the burst rotations, your buff will have expired and her E wouldn't really gain much from all these buffs. Previously, most characters 
the burst duration or the DPS duration is usually about 12 seconds. So the buff aspiring were not an issue for those previous maps. In fact, the only recent sub DPS character that I've done is Albedo and he snapshots. So yeah. Now with all of this in mind, it may warrant using Sarah over Bennett, even without C6 Sarah, but lack of heal would still be an issue. Okay. So you can use C6 Sarah, it's just that without Bennett you don't have a heal. So in certain situations it's okay, but some situations it might be kinda bad, especially if you're up against corrosion mobs. So I'll provide the updated figures in this video video that accurately take into consideration the buff expiry and no snapshot of buffs. And I also share an alternative rotation that can at least get the buffs uh, on most of her E. And the buffs I'm talking about are the Freedom Swarm, 4 piece, non piece, etc. Obviously, we still can't get Bandit's Q or C2 Kazuha effect because those two, these two require still to be in the field. So if you don't snapshot, you will never get it once you're off field. Right. And I'll also end with a damage to DPS comparison between the two rotations. Okay, let's talk about rotations. Okay, pardon me. So for rotations itself, it's the same electro hyper carry, but you've you noticed that I've added a Kazuha E press with no plunge so that you don't trigger the freedom swan effect. Obviously, if you're not using Freedom Swan, then by all means, go ahead and use your Plunge. Okay? So this is to get your buff. Okay, you get the Raiden. Raiden's buff doesn't really matter, but the Kazuha buff matters here for your, your IA3 at C. Then you do your, the rest of the rotation is the same. Now, if you notice, this rotation does have an issue where your Raiden doesn't fully enjoy Bandit's burst duration. Your initial hit, the highest damage, of course, is uh, being covered. It's just that uh, maybe your last M4C, around your last M4C, because you're going to be able to do 2 M4C plus 1 M1C. So somewhere between the middle of your second M4C, Bandit's Burst will have expired. And it may be earlier, depending on how you're doing your rotation, as in how fast you are. Especially if you're C1 Kazuha, then it will end even earlier. So there is that disadvantage. So it's kind of a trade-off where you you work on buffing your Yae's burst but you lose out on your Raiden's burst. Or you can do an alternative rotation here where this is how it goes. We do the Yae 3 se first followed by the rest. This two is the same as this. Then you use your Yae Q. Which means we are not using Bandit's burst or Kazuha burst before Yae's burst. In this case, we'll still get the burst damage bonus from Raiden. We'll still get the elemental damage from Kazuha. But we are not getting the Bandit's burst buff for Yae's Q. So you can think of this as a rotation where it focuses on buffing Raiden's Q and Yae's E for a longer duration compared to the first. But in return, Yae's Q is not fully buffed. So you can think of this as a alternative rotation with a E focus rotation rather than Q. And not to worry, we'll do damage comparison later, and you guys can I'll do a TLDR and you guys will know which is better. It's a bit different than what you kind of would have expected, but I'll share it later. For the EC, if any more, no change. So let's look at Yae Miko dam solo damage. Because the Amico solo damage is the one where I can really show you guys what is the difference from the base attack uh, buff. So this is the new figure, 605k. DPS per second is 24k and 20k at R1. C0 R1 will be here. C1 R1 will be here. But this is a very very rough estimate. It really really depends on how much ER we need. Okay. If you want more details on this, please uh, check out the math guide one. If you have not already seen that. Now let's talk about percentage difference here. Okay. Now I know that some of it is cut off, but it's fine. You don't really need to see this because these are figures that I've already shared in Math Guide 1. So in Math Guide 1, the damage, the highest damage potential 
for Yaya Miko Solo is 563 or 564k in 25 seconds versus what we have now which is 606k thanks to the increase in base attack from 264 to 340 and these are the percentage differences so essentially it's 7.4% to 7.1% so it's about a 7% increase and you will see that the reason why attack sense has 7.4% is because it has more attack percentage right because it's more attack percentage is making use of the increased base attack if you go on the em build this increased base attack is not good for you and i in the first place even without the base attack increase i already said that em is not that great of an option it's more like a good to have additional bonus that's all and he's now it's worse off because her e does a snapshot so Diona's burst, not gonna give her EM because you need to be in the field. Kazuha C2 effect also requires you to be in Kazuha's burst on field. That's a problem as well. Uh Albedo, I think he is able to give. I need to check Albedo's description. But it's only 125 EM. And it's not worth it using an Albedo for that purpose. Not to mention it's not that synergistic with Yaemiko per se. So anyway, the more attack percentage that you have, the bigger, better this pass percentage will be. So effectively, it's about 7% increase in damage and it will be even bigger with more attack percentage buff from teammates as well. Oh, there's a typo here, but just ignore that. So let's look at the full team now again. But this time around, the figures are updated with uh, buff expiry and no snapshot. So I've changed some of the calculation within the 25 seconds. The rest of the stats are the same. We have a fully built banner and a Kazuha. Yeah, I am trying to reduce the amount of math that I have to do to simplify things. It's partly because of this that I uh, missed the buff expiry and the no snapshot for banner spurs as well. But it's okay. We are still it's still very very far from Yae Miko. We have time to show you guys right now in this video the updated stats or figures. So you see here. In the Q focus rotation, 25 seconds, we have almost 1.2 million damage. And the DPS per second is the maximum potential is 48 k Okay. Now, even with the increase in base attack, there's still a very significant drop in DPS once we account for buff expiry and no snapshotting of Bandit's Burst and C2 Kazuha. The Bandit's Burst still applies for Yae Miko's Burst, but it doesn't apply for her E if you go off you. So 68k to approximately 48k is a huge drop, right? I mean, it's 20k of 68k is about 13, 28% there about. So it's a perfect example of why not snapshotting is actually bad for off-field DPS, especially if you're not using her signature weapon. Bear in mind that I'm using her signature weapon that offsets the disadvantage, slightly offsets the disadvantage of not snapshotting. Imagine if you're using not using her signature weapon, then getting buffs on her is even tougher with her not snapshotting. And in case you're wondering, updated figures without base attack change is about 1.06 million. So with the base attack increase, it goes to 1.19, so it's about a 12% increase. Okay, so basically it's a 7 to 12. 12% being when you have the full team buffs being included. However, despite the fact that she doesn't snapshot and it's bad for all few DPS, even that Mihoyo is increasingly making no snapshot characters, they should eventually release characters who buff no snapshot characters. Example, Sarah. Sarah is actually a very good example where your off-field DPS not snapshotting doesn't really affect her. Because she is able to give you a buff every 6 seconds. Especially if you have... I uh, can't remember whether it's C1 or C2 for her. The one that leaves a weaker uh, buff. Or rather, weaker damage but same amount of buff. The Thunder Feather or Crown Feather. I'm sorry, I really forgot the name. So that is Sarah versus Bandit. So Sarah is able to buff all few DPS who don't snapshot. So I do believe that eventually they release more of such characters that have a proper interaction with a no snapshot all few DPS. 
for not for main DPS on few characters, not snatch shooting is not that terrible. In case inst in fact some situations it's even better. But for off field DPS is really quite painful. But I'll say that Yae definitely has more potential with the release of future characters. Okay. The the thing about making Sarah work, it, the, the biggest problem is that she doesn't heal compared to Bennett who heals. So it's like we have to struggle to find a healing slot. Like a healer. Unless you don't want to use Raiden with uh, Yae Miko. Then you don't have an issue. Just use Yae and Sarah. Done. But if you use Yae and Sarah, your other two characters better be a main DPS character. Now the beauty of 6 is that Kazuha starts to come here, right? Starts to come in. I mean, even I myself don't have 6 Kazuha. All I intended was for him to be a sub DPS or a buffer or support, whatever the case is. I only have C3 Kazuha. So I. But even without Yae, Yae's keep being as broad. Quite some time back when I was using her, when Raiden was first released, I already wanted a C6 Kazuha. Because I definitely see the potential of him being able to do on field DPS. And starting to come together, right? Imagine if you use Kazuha together with Yae, Sarah, and your fourth will be a Hydro with healing. That's it. Or, if you don't want to, if you don't want to spend that much, right, you can use Chalk as your hydro cash option but then again you have no heal so you can go Sayu Sayu gives you heal and before PSVV effect and swirls but she doesn't give you the damage buff that Kazuha provides yeah so that's that but anyway let's see what other characters they release in future that can help with this but definitely she has potential yay because right now, whatever damage, highest damage that we can meet for her, it can go higher with the proper buffs. Right now, she can't benefit from those because of her E not stat shotting. Now, for this, for the 8k, right now the burst damage is higher. It's 392k, which is expected, right? Because on Math Guide 1, we said that it was 371k, 372k. Now it's slightly higher because of the increased base attack. So, but, but, but. This is 1.2 million, so 392k is about 33%. So it actually takes up a bigger portion of the overall damage now in this uh, Q focus rotation. Let me just correct this. It's better to call this a Q focus rotation, right? And again, same as what I've mentioned previously, all of the above have not included any reaction damage yet. So you have your Kazuha with Pyro Infused Burst to give you overload. Because this, all of this is still based on Bennett. Even if Bennett can't buff her E, Bennett can buff her Q, Bennett can buff uh, Kazuha, Bennett can buff Raiden. Okay. This is also not the highest damage the IA can reach because obviously I did not include, include CC Sarah. Though the rotation can get, get irritating since Sarah's buff is short. But, 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 there's a 4 star weapon called Solar Pearl. And Solar Pearl's effect lasts for 6 seconds. And you need to trigger it every 6 seconds. So it kind of matches Sarah's buff and helps with that in terms of the rotation. Uh, full for thought, yeah. So C4 Raiden effect I have not included for your eyes or field damage. I do believe most people don't really have C4 Raiden. If it's included, it will be a pretty good boost because it gives you 30% attack, which is more than R1 FS. R1 FS gives you 20%. And more importantly, your C4 Raiden e effect is only going to start after Raiden finishes her burst, which is the bulk or majority of your Yai's E duration, or at least the second half of it. Sorry, I shouldn't say it's the bulk, it's the second half of it. So even without all your other buffs that C4 Raiden, it's gonna give you that additional buff which I have not included here. Okay. So all in all, 48k per second is still pretty high for a few DPS on a CSPK. It's just not OP per se. Uh, let's look at the alternative rotation where we focus on getting more buffs on her E instead of buff fully buffing her Q. So this is the damage figure, and you notice that it's a shorter rotation. 
because when we do an e-focus rotation, I don't need to how should I put it? Some of the setup time on Kazuha and Bennett is done within your final E, thus reducing your overall rotation duration. Okay, so it's 1.03 million. Yeah, 22 seconds. The damage per second is actually not too far off. It's 47k here. And here is the comparison against a Q focus rotation. So, with an E focus rotation that's shorter, your actual DPS result varies. You'll see that there's some red figures, right? So the dark red figures here imply that the Q focus rotation is better. If you don't, if it's not red, then the E focus rotation is better. So let's let's talk about the points here. Things to observe from this. So first off, attack sense will always perform better in Q focus rotation versus the rest. Since your attack helps the higher attack multiplier on your Q as well. Okay, that's point number one. Point two for this portion here, the comparison, R5 will perform better for E focus rotation until your Q level increases to match E level. So you see here R5 pretty much always having a better performance than the Q focus rotation, even at C4. But that's because our talent levels is a uneven distribution where elemental skill is high while burst is not high. Once you increase your burst level, as you can see here, you have a situation where Q focus rotation is better at C5. At C6, E focus rotation is only 0.3% better, which is more or less the same, really. And once the talent levels are matching, E focus rotation actually loses out to Q focus rotation by about 2.2% at R5. R1 is 1.1%. So this is the reason why I say a C6 R5 with equal, equal E and Q talent levels, Q focus rotation is slightly better by 2.2%, which is slightly, largely tends to the huge buff from Bennett's Q on Yai's Q. Okay. So E focus rotation does have two advantages. It's shorter, right? It's 22 seconds versus 25 seconds. And Raiden can also get the full duration buff from Bennett, which this I've covered earlier when I was talking about the original rotation. You can't get the full Raiden buff. Uh, especially if you have C1 Kazuha, then you more the more you can't get it. So if your Raiden is stack, fully stack. Your Yai is C6, so that the difference between rotations is smaller, yeah? Mm, you can see here, right? As you progress through the constellations. You can actually consider using E focus rotation. Because honestly, at C6 Yai, difference is not that big. Assuming you are using at sense, which you should for C6 Yai anyway. So I personally, I would rather get a full duration buff from Bennett for Raiden as well as a shorter rotation if the difference is only a couple of percentage, 1-2%. to two percent. The overall team DPS will probably be better. I should say probably it's most likely better. Before I do the actual math to compare that, but at least you guys can appreciate this, yeah? Alright. So, yes, I made a TLDR and it's not half hour yet for this video. So, the first TLDR point is, the base attack increase from later changes provides a 7% for solo and 12% for full team buffs without Sarah. Okay. Now, B. After accounting for buff expiry and no snapshotting of Venice buff as well as C2 Kazuha, I'm very sad about this, very sad about this. Yae Miko's TPS is 48k per second at C6 R5 and approximately 17k 17 at C0 R1. This is not solo, this is with team buffs. I mean, honestly speaking, 17k is a good figure. It's still higher than some of the sub TPS figures that we have right now. For Electro, anyway. So, based on this, I'll say her damage is definitely good, but it's not OP. I really don't think it's OP. It's just at the good region. So let's say OP let's say OP is tier S. 
then maybe she's tier A, for example. Now, whether or not she's OP, you can also compare against your existing characters of your DPS to decide where she stands. Fisher would be a good comparison. Beto, not so much because Beto requires NACA to proc. Fisher and Yae's uh, sub DPS or off field damage doesn't. And on top of that, Fisher and Yae both are using elemental skill, Beto is using burst, so that's also the uh, matter of maintaining her burst and the downtime involved as well. Fisher with a bit of management, you can get her E to be there permanently. So, yep, there's downtime for Beto, but Yae, there's no downtime. Not really, anyway. Of course, you can say that, oh no, we shouldn't compare against uh, this, we should compare against like uh, Xiangling's burst. Mm, if you really want to, sure, but like I said, Yae Miko's DPS has no downtime, her uh, off field DPS anyway. And technically speaking, you can say that with Miao, with a fully buff Xiangling and full teams, etc., you either have this figure or even higher. And th that's correct. Absolutely correct. But those requires reactions, correct setup, snapshotting, etc. But this is, uh, how should I put it? it? It hasn't included, this has not included reaction damage. This has not included, uh, what's that? Raiden C4 effect as well, if you have her. So definitely this figure can be higher. And remember that this figure is offset by the crit rate already. Which means the actual damage figure that you see is going to be higher than this. Okay? So just bear this in mind. I'm not saying that she's OP. Okay? I'm not saying she's the best sub DPS. I'm saying that she's good, but not OP. But in case you think she's bad, that's why I have to explain the last portion. Now, the point. Q focus rotation is better for most scenarios, other than CCCIA and fully stacked Raiden which I will recommend the E-Focus Rotation instead. So for details on the rotation itself, please refer to the rotation session. I'm not going to run through the whole rotation in a TLDR session. Okay? Very, very straightforward. Basically, if you have C6 EIA and a very nicely built Raiden, then do E-Focus Rotation. Otherwise, you're better off with Q-Focus Rotation. Okay? So the best buff in-game at the moment mostly require snapshotting for off field. If more buff characters are released that do not have this restriction or they complement the current characters that do not have this restriction, example Sarah, Yai's damage can increase significantly since this is what she suffers from at the moment. Her solo damage is actually pretty good for off field DPS. It's pretty decent. Tier A, like I said. What she's lacking is the ability to consistently buff her E, her off field damage. That's what she's lacking right now. While having a comp that can still at least heal, that can do CC pulls, etc. Okay? That's the main point. But ironically, if you don't already have those good buffers right now, like Bennett or Kazuha even, Yae will perform better for you, relatively speaking. Although, okay, for Kazuha, right, the buff will still work. It's more like Freedom Swan's buff. Yeah, I should say it's Freedom Swan's buff. So anyway, Yae will perform better for you, relatively speaking, especially if your banner is also not fully built. A potential con in future that I would be interested in exploring will be Kazuha, Yae, Sarah, Ayato. But it really depends on how I those kids it's like whether or not she can he can complement what is missing or lacking here. But anyway, that is for future. Let's see how that goes in future. We will know in I don't know about four weeks time. Mm, yeah, that about from the point of this video. Okay, so that's the end of my video today. The math guide 1.1 where we cover the latest changes in beta as well as the accounting for the buff expiry and no snapshotting of Banner's buff and C2 Kazuha. Ah, I feel so sad about this. And I hope that they do give us some more characters that can improve 
of field DPS damage without snapshotting. Especially off field DPS, sorry, off field DPS damage that do not snapshot. I hope that they give much more characters that can complement such characters. Otherwise, it's it feels painful. Not gonna lie, it feels painful for a off field DPS character to not be able to snapshot. Alright, so Yai Mikon video series this is pretty much the same as the Math Guide one, but I just want to highlight one point is that I'm also considering doing Seracom. Maybe Kazuha Sayu with uh, Kazuha or Sayu with Yai Raiden Sera and EC Comp calculations as well. But those will have to come after at least uh, artifact builds or maybe one or two weapon videos. Right now I think people want me to do with safe, right? Even though I already covered why I don't think Mute with safe is good for her. And the other thing is, the other weapon that I, I'm interested in for her is Solar Pearl. Solar Pearl looks promising. So anyway, let's see how that works out. So unfortunately, Yae Miko's damage is only at tier A. So she's good, but not OP. But she has potential. That's what I'll say. In future, when Mihoyo fixes the buffing for off-field DPS that do not snapshot, she will ha she will land in a very good situation. Okay. So these are the TLDR. I hope this video has been helpful to you guys. If you like the content, remember that video and click subscribe for more. Yeah. Bye.